So what if uh, someone wants to collaborate with you, like maybe do some kind of joint venture or uh, they want to interview you or swap interviews, it, some kind of online collab as, as, we, as I call it, um, because you know, it's supposed to be helpful for both of your businesses or whatever, and you don't wanna collaborate with that person. What do you say? Um, I, I have had so many of these situations over the years as my audience and sort of my, yeah, my reputation has grown in my industry, more and more people want to, I, I, I mean, there's like, there's like two levels of it. Okay. So like one level is literally spam. I mean, so, so it's like somebody who doesn't know whom you don't know, or let's talk about that level first, someone who you don't know contacting you. I just had an email this morning and says, we'd like to collaborate with you. <laughs> and uh, you know, I you can usually tell it's spam because there's like nothing customized in the email, right? Or the message. It's just they are just sending that same message out to 500 people, 5,000 people, who knows how many. Uh, and those are really easy just to ignore. I mean, of course, just spam. But sometimes even let's just talk. That's level one. <laughs> level two is like it's still kind of spam. I don't know who they are, but they write like a nice paragraph or two saying, "George, I really like." Um, the stuff I'm seeing on your Instagram or whatever, I'd love to collaborate with you. Maybe we could um, swap interviews or uh, maybe you could, you, you know, sometimes, you know, level 1.5, I might say, is people who say, George, I love your stuff. Um, I'd like for you to interview me on your podcast. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> all right. Yeah, thank you for liking my stuff and interviewing you in any way is cost me time and cost me cost me my audience right so i only interview people if if i swap interviews with them and we have a similar sized audience then it'd be fair otherwise why am i interviewing you be just because you're you you're, you're, you emailed me about it <laughs> like seriously like and no matter how well spoken you are and how brilliant you are you want me to just interview you um unless we, we there's some kind of equal trade why because then everyone under the sun could could email me and i would say yes every well spoken charismatic brilliant person heart bent heart bent face person under the sun why wouldn't i interview everybody right so so that's level 1.5 level 2 like i said is like thoughtful messaging i don't know who they are and 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 um you know they uh they want to swap interviews they're very nice i go to their page nice heart based person but it's not um it's not an equal audience size. So they, my audience size might be 10 times their, their audience. It's just not fair. It's not fair. And so the way I write back, so thank you so much for, you know, again, they wrote a nice message. So I, and, and it's like a potential future collaborator, maybe even a potential future client or referral source, because they actually genuinely follow my stuff, like my stuff. So at that point, I'd say, hey, you know what? Thank you. I really, um, appreciate your invitation and certainly in the future it might be the case and i'll just say that you know um there's a lot on my plate right now can't do it but um if i think of other opportunities or others that you might connect with i'll let you know and i will because if i think of someone else who's a similar audience etc now let's talk about level three um and how to say a graceful no i mean level three would would, would be you know someone you know and um well, you could say level three could be someone you know, but it wouldn't be an equal trade. Um, and I would s send a similar message, essentially. Thank you. I so appreciate your work as well. Lots on my plate. I'll think of someone who might be a, a great fit for you as well, and I'll let you know. That's it. And that, that, that's a graceful no. Level four, you might say, is somebody who um, you know uh, might, be, might be more or less an equal a trade, but for whatever reason, um, you don't want to collaborate with them. Uh, maybe you don't uh, you don't trust their 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 ethics, or you don't trust their reliability, or whatever reason. It's just you know you don't you don't want to at this time. And so at that point, I would I would just say you know you can always say um, there's a lot on my plate. I mean th there there's always the option. I just want to there's always the option of not responding. I think a lot of us who are watching this need to take that option more often because we are all so nice here and we feel like not responding is somehow a, an affront to somebody. And yes, it is. It's a slight to not respond. Well, you, you, you could, of course, someone could say, well, maybe they didn't receive the email or maybe they're, they just don't 
clear all their emails. But if they message you in other ways, and you don't respond. That is considered a slight. And guess what? It's okay to slight people. People? It is. Well, like you can keep boundaries and not respond. Really can. Um, and, you know, but, but just know that not responding uh, is basically sending a signal that you'd like to distance the relationship. And it's perfectly okay to send the signal that way. Now, in the perfect world, if you had all the time and energy in the world, you'll you know spend an hour crafting a breakup email or whatever, or whatever you know. But uh, who has the time? Who has the energy uh, when there's so much we already have on our plate? So I think not responding is, yeah, you could say it's ghosting, is is a, is a is an is a fine response for someone you want to distance yourself from. So. Think about that. And then, um, you know, if you, if you want to respond quickly and briefly, I just say, um, hey, thanks for the suggestion. I'll keep it in mind. There's a lot going on on my plate right now, um, but I'll let you know if it's, if it's the right fit. And, and you will, because maybe, maybe they uh, reveal themselves to be uh, later in the future to be more ethical than you thought or uh, more reliable than, or whatever it is. So. I hope this is helpful and please feel free comment below if you have any suggestions on how to respond, you know I, i'll tell you another story. Um, I had somebody who this is the most uncomfortable one that, that I can remember recently I had somebody who was new to me, I mean they were following my content. Uh, just for a little bit. I mean, it's not like they had been liking and commenting for a long time, but they, they just started following my content, I think they had commented once or something like that, and then they direct message me private message me. On social media and they said hey um i know you're really into collabs uh when can we talk just for 15 or 30 minutes and you know in the past when i was less busy uh, i was really open to just getting on the call with somebody yeah you know and they when i go to their profile they seem like they have their you know uh, they seem like a thoughtful professional basically right like someone i might typically possibly collaborate with but just the energy of pushiness, like, like, please, everyone, do not ask anyone for a phone call before there is a sense that they want a phone call or a meeting with you. It's like, where did y'all get this idea? Like networking means to get some, man, it's the old traditional networking training. You get someone on the phone as, as soon as you possibly can. It's the means to an end. I don't care how you get them on the phone. Get them on the damn phone or the Zoom or whatever, you know? Um, and it's like, so the, the first thing message was like, hey, when can we talk for 1530? It's so uncomfortable for me to say, how do you know I want to talk with you? Yeah, I like your profile, everything, but how do I, how do you, how can you just assume that I have time to talk with you? You know, and, and so I didn't say that, but I said, hey, there's a lot, of, you know, my line by now. So if you get that line from me, you got to be, be careful. <laughs> there's a lot of my play. <laughs> that's my, that's my, that's my slight to you. Okay. There's a lot on my plate right now, and um, I'll, I'll let you know. And then what's worse was they wrote back and said, I just need 15 minutes, 30 minutes of your time. I said, I said, hey, you know, I, I don't usually do calls. I, I just prefer. I, so you know what I said? This is my second message, my second slight. OK, if I say this to you, I said, hey, let's just keep it on messaging for now. If you have anything you want to run by me, just go ahead and message me back. I'd, I'd like to see what you have. It's my signal to you that I don't want to talk to you. I don't. I don't have time for you. I can't make the time of day for you. Okay, got it. And and maybe in the future, if if the person does have a thoughtful um, idea, thoughtful opportunity, uh, something that I feel is a, is an equal trade. And I say equal trade, by the way. I'm not always a you know tit for tat, you know eye for eye kind of person. When I build a relationship with someone. You know, when there is a true relationship, a heart-based connection for some time, I, I bend over backwards sometimes for my friends, of course. You know, like friends like, you know, Tad Hargrave or like Mark Silver or like Mark Walsh or whoever, like people and, you know, people here at MasterCard, like I, I'll do whatever I can, you know, to, 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 to support you because I know we have a trust with, between each other. We have respect for each other's time and energy. But when there's no trust and respect like that yet, even though there might be in the future, it's rude 
to ask someone for a phone call or, or a meeting. You know what I mean? So um, <laughs> that's, my, that's, my, that's my take on it. And I want to th thank Angie for, for giving a, a, a different take on this. I really appreciate it. She said, no thanks is a complete sentence. <laughs> yeah, it is. And uh, Angie also mentioned that, you know, giving the excuse of um, I have too much on my plate uh, might send a signal that you don't have openings for, for clients right now. And so someone who might not be the best fit client, you tell them I've got too much on my plate, they might have a friend who's the perfect client for you. And they might tell their friend, oh, yeah, she's really busy right now. So that's a, that's a good point. You know, that's, that's a good point. So thank you for bringing that forward. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, another chat here. People who need the hints the most don't know how to take a hint. You, you know, it's a really good point. I, that's a really good point because it's like, it's like there's a certain amount of social graces that I guess I assume, but it's not, it should, probably shouldn't be assumed for 20% of the population perhaps uh, that they can't read between the lines. And so, yes, <laughs> that's true. And I should say, and I should say that it's not, um, you know, uh, it's well known these days that it's, you know, we should accept people with neurodiversity, right? So it's like, not everybody, it, you know, I, I actually used to think, and I might still, I'm a little Asperger-y, you know, at, or I certainly used to be, uh, honestly, I, I feel like I was Asperger-y or just underdeveloped socially for like much of my life. Um, I, I never was very good socially all the way through school. Um, I feel like I just became a little bit more socially savvy, like last week or something like that. Like, like it's pretty recent <laughs> you know? and maybe, maybe you, you still might disagree with me, but, but yeah, so it is, um, I, I think, I think, uh, you know, even though I was kind of uh, blunt just earlier in this video, like, I think it is good to be gentle with people, to be compassionate, knowing that they, they can't, some, some of us can't read between the lines yet uh, and may never be able to just given our, our hardware. So be gentle, but, also have good boundaries. And if someone keeps pressing and pressing, you can always, it's okay to block them, not block them. Yeah, maybe block them if it's, if it's like, if it's really rude or whatever, but, but to not respond and to, uh, sorry, this is the word I'm looking for, mute the conversation, right? Like on any kind of direct messaging on social media, you can, you can, you can click the three dots and mute the conversation so that you're not constantly notified that person's trying to tell, talk to you again. On email as well, like on Gmail, I know you can mute a, an email thread if the person just keeps on keeps on doing that, and you don't want to you don't want to block them in a way that they can't find your profile anymore. Uh, if that if that doesn't feel compassionate in that situation.